but again, there's a huge difference between cigarettes and just pure nicotine. And a lot of people get confused about that and they try and kind of conflate the two and they can't be conflated. There's so much junk in those cigarettes. <laughs> that time of year if you live in cold climates like I do it's time to plant your tobacco seeds indoors I mean these seeds are tiny if you've ever planted carrots you kind of have a sense of how tiny they are I mean they are microscopic so you got to start them early this is what I do I grow my own tobacco I think a lot of the problems with cigarettes are from these man-made designer chemicals designed to make you addicted because there's actual benefits to nicotine and we'll definitely do an episode or two in the future on some of those benefits um, in adults. But today I wanna to go the opposite direction and show you some of the issues, some of the risks that you probably don't know. And the reason for that is because vaping is massively on the rise. I mean, I see it. If you're a teenager, you definitely see it. I've got a not an art, you know, a web page here printed off from the NIH, the National Institute of Health, and it's specifically from the National Institute of Drug Abuse. And it just came out this year. It's a report on teens and e-cigarettes. That's what the title of the report is, Teens and E-Cigarettes. And they said the use of vaping nicotine has nearly doubled just in the past year. It went from about 10% over 20% in 2018. Over 20% right now of teens, teens. And they say it's unclear if teens know what's in the vaping devices they are using since m the most popular devices do not have nicotine free options. What was really ironic is they, they did a poll of teens and they asked them what's in your e-cigarette. 66% say it's just flavoring. Most people think it's just flavoring and they don't even have nicotine free options. It's got nicotine. Only 13% say they have nicotine in them and yet they're vaping nicotine. Um, and by the way, I think it was about, it was at least 25% of people that did vaping went on later to smoke actual cigarettes. And those things are terrible for you, no matter whether you're an adult or a kid. Um, so they went from the nicotine to the cigarettes. Uh, and then of course, over 60% of them said that getting a hold, getting access to these devices is relatively easy. So it's becoming a real problem. If there's health issues with nicotine, let's talk about it. And I want to talk from a perspective of growth because, you know, a lot of people think growth is just purely genetics. And if you've got good genes, you get tall. And if you don't, you're short. But, and there's some aspects to that, but you'd be surprised how much of growth has to do with proper nutrition and certain non-genetic factors and it starts with your growth plate. It starts when your, your bones are growing. You've got something called a growth plate. Scientists call it an epiphyseal plate. Epiphyseal. In Britain, you know, in, in England, they call it ep epiphyseal, but I like epiphyseal. Um, and, you know, that's the end cap on your bone. It's, it's cartilage on the end of your bone that promotes growth. And then you can see that on x-rays and it, you know, when you're an adult, you have what's called an epiphyseal line because <clears throat> that closes, that growth plate closes and you stop growing. So why does that matter? Well, for, you know, it matters because of this research. 2008, I've got a paper here. It's from the Journal of PLOS, Public Library of Science. It's called Nicotine Acts on Growth Plate Chondrocytes to Delay Skeletal Growth Through the Alpha-7 Neuronal Nicotinic Acetylcholine Receptor. Um, so, take home points just from the title. Nicotine Acts on the Growth Plates to Delay Growth. So they, talk, they start off by saying cigarette smoking adversely affects skeletal growth. They've done a bunch of studies previously to show that. But again, there's a huge difference between cigarettes and just pure nicotine. And a lot of people get confused about that and they try and kind of conflate the two and they can't be conflated. There's so much junk in those cigarettes. Um, I mean, they literally just cause inflammation. So you want to get chronic disease? Smoke cigarettes. You want joint problems? You want kidney problems? You want lung problems? You want brain problems? You want skin problems? I mean, pretty much all chronic disease 
that you can think of comes from inflammation. Not every single thing, but almost all of it comes from inflammation. And cigarette smoking certainly will increase inflammation. But they go on to say, there's kind of been this recent discovery of localization of neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. They didn't. They thought of them as just brain receptors, these nicotine activated, you know, compounds. But they realized, oh, they're actually in the growth plates also, and they're in other places as well. Um, so what they did is they actually took chondrocytes from extra human fingers. So here at the Mayo Clinic, I've actually seen this. I've never actually used them for my research, but I've you know, we have them in our lab. Um, you know, in fact, I recently published a paper. I, have, I had to write it down, but it's called Molecular Pathology of Adverse Local Tissue Reaction Caused by Metal-on-Metal -metal Implants, de defined by RNA-seq. Um, so I'm not like a world-class expert in nicotine and growth plates, but I've published, recently published, co-authored, right? I'm not a first author, but I've published papers on metal-on-metal -metal implants. That's when you have artificial joints, metal joints, and what happens from that. And in our lab, I've seen these surgeries where they take, you know, people are born with six fingers, and they literally do a surgery, and they take one off. And they give it to us to do research on, and that's what they're using in this paper. And so they're taking cells from those extra fingers, and they're testing nicotine on those cells. They did it with mice. They literally gave mice nicotine in their drinking water, plus or minus, some mice obviously they didn't, some mice they did, what did they find? Nicotine exposure resulted in delayed skeletal growth. Shorter mice, right? The results suggest nicotine from cigarette smoking acts directly on growth plate chondrocytes to decrease matrix synthesis, etc. blah, 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 a lot of suppress hypertrophic differentiation, a lot of technical terms, hypertrophy. Think of muscle bodybuilding hypertrophy everybody wants to grow hypertrophy so it's suppressing hypertrophy you know hypertrophy in your bones leading to delayed skeletal growth super interesting paper but that's 2008 and it's just in mice yes but you know it's a pretty good study you're you're whacking your growth plates if you're ingesting just pure nicotine not just cigarette smoking pure nicotine 2018, more recent. This is really interesting. American Journal of Translational Research. There's a paper here. It's called Low Dose Nicotine Reduces the Homing Ability of Murine BMSCs During Fracture Healing. Murine means mouse. So mouse BMSCs. What's BMSCs? Those are bone, um, uh, bone marrow stem cells, BMSCs. They're stem cells taken from your bone marrow. Um, so they're investigating these stem cells with or without nicotine treatment. Again, it's low dose. And they did a bunch of different assays. They did a scratch test assay. So you have cells growing on a dish and you scratch it, cross it, and then you see how the cells are able to grow back and fix that wound. That's one assay. They did a transwell assay where you have cells that you see how they can cross a membrane. They can go through a you know, a matrix, a like a collagen matrix. Basically, you test the ability of these cells to move. And, you know, you saw it in the title, homing ability. What does that mean? Well, with, when you've got inflammation, you've got a site of inflammation over here, and you've got stem cells going throughout your blood, they actually have the ability to home in on the inflammation. They can, they can find that site, they can move around through your blood, through your body, find that site of inflammation, and heal it. Different topic for a different day, but that's why they're studying this, that's why it's interesting. They found, basically, they did all these different assays. <clears throat> they also used mice. They looked at mice um, with micro CT. They looked at fracture heals, healing in mice. They actually break their bones, and then they look at healing with and without nicotine. Our data suggests exposure to low-dose nicotine concentrations affects, may affect bone formation, bone formation by inhibiting the migration and homing of BMSCs, of bone marrow stem cells. It inhibits inhibits the homing ability of those stem cells. They can't get out, find those sites, and heal them as well. So that's a major problem if you've got a fracture. So there's times when you don't want to tinker with nicotine as a performance enhancing drug if you're an adult. That's if you've got weak bones or if you've got a fracture. And how do you know if you've got weak bones? Well, last paper here, 2013. 
missense polymorphisms of the Wnt16 gene are associated with bone mass, hip geometry, and fractures. This is the gene. These are some of the genes that I look at when I'm doing DNA analysis. Um, specifically, they looked at over a thousand people in this study. They found two uh, SNPs, RS2908004 and RS270766. Those are the two that I look at. Um, two of probably about four that I look at to determine how strong your bones are. And, <clears throat> you know, you can look at those. You can rewind the, this episode and, and listen to those RS codes. You can search them in your 23andMe data and determine whether you've got super strong bones or whether your bones are kind of questionable. Because if they're questionable, you don't want to use nicotine in most situations. But if you've got super strong bones, as long as they're not broken, it's probably not going to have that big of an effect. But where you do get the effect is growth plates. You, if you want to be shorter, vape if you're, gro if you're a growing teenager. If you want to grow to your maximum potential, again, a lot of it has to do with your environment. It's not that much of it is not genetic. You know, we look for genes involved in growth and how tall you are. There's not that many of them. Most of it is environmental. If you're eating really healthy, exercising, you're not stressed out, you're getting a lot of sleep. Sleep genes are important for growth, really important. But you'd be surprised how much you can grow even if you supposedly have bad genetics for height. But man, vaping, super common, but it's potentially stunting your growth. <laughs>